Hello everyone, thank you for to today's third and final video. So we're going to have a look at the ECODF 42 day uh, model for today's third and final uh, video. So uh, last week ECMW, uh, uh gave away their treasure trove of, uh, of data and uh, so we are now able to bring you full sort of six week look heads with the ECMW. Uh, this stuff used to be like gold dust. Uh, uh, a few years ago, only available to uh, pro mechs and people with a lot of money. Now, anybody can see this at uh, ecmdf.int. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to have a look at the uh, mean cell pressure anomalies the next six weeks. We'll have a look, we'll have a look at 500 millibar height anomalies, temperature, rainfall anomalies as well. We'll be doing this every Friday around 5, 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, so, uh, so yes, it could be very, very exciting over the next few weeks as we're able to bring you these uh, charts for the first time that we've been able to do that. Uh, right, so just say that uh, earlier on today we released JMA Friday, of course, that's the monthly look at with Japanese and Southwest Beach Mars, and also released the 10 to 14 day video update too. Uh, check out both of those uh, videos and see what's going on. Uh, it's my birthday eve today, so I'm taking the evening off to have a bit of a rest on my birthday eve, so it's no live stream. Uh, tonight, but in replace of tonight's, in replace of tonight's live stream, uh, there's going to be a live stream tomorrow on my birthday at six o'clock in the evening. And I'll tell you what's happening over weekend at the end of uh, this video. Actually, there's a lot coming up over weekend live streams, premieres, you name it. It's happening. Very, very exciting. Uh, weekend coming up at Gaza. It's actually probably one of the biggest weekends that we've ever had, I think, in terms of live streams and premieres and so on. So it's going to be really, really great. I'll talk you for everything that's going on uh, on the channel at the end of the video. But let's get on with this, first of all. So uh, these are our mean sea level pressure anomalies broken down into weekly periods. Uh, so this is week this is week one mean sea level pressure anomaly for uh, for Northern Europe. And it takes us from uh, the 15th through to the 26th of October, or to the week ending the 26th of October, if you like. Uh, right, so let's have a look at it then. Uh, so uh, this is how week one uh, is looking for the week ending. No, it's going to be for like next Monday, isn't it? So what is next Monday? That's the 19th, I think. That'll be Monday, um, Saturday the 17th, Sunday the 18th. That'll be Monday the 19th of October. So this is the mean cell pressure anomaly from uh, Monday the 19th of October to Monday the 26th of October. They have Tommy, I've tweeted them. Uh, about the dates, and they said that they are going to try and work, uh, you know, work it out so it's a little bit less uh, confusing. So this is going to be the week, uh, week one, from the 19th to the 26th of October. Uh, and looks like low pressure is across northern and western Europe too. We've got blocking with these pink colours. That's high pressure cool. So on this scale, uh, by the way, pink is extrapolating to high pressure blue to low pressure. Uh, so we've got blocking out to the north and west. We've got low pressure through the north and western Europe. We've got some ridging through southern and southeastern parts of Europe. The jet stream is going to be going something a little bit like that. So although we're under low pressure, we're still more or less on the cool side of the jet across northern and western Europe. So it's going to be unsettled. There's going to be bouts of heavy rain in the north and west of Europe, and there will be, uh, there will be cool temperatures with that uh, as well. So that's week one. Right, let's move on through then. So this is week two. This is week ending the uh, 26th of October to the 2nd of November. Still looking quite unsettled, uh, really. Looks like I've got a bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge through here. But we've got low pressure around Greenland and coming down into the UK and western parts of Europe. And then a ridge over on the eastern side of Europe across eastern and northeast Europe. The flow of the jet is probably still going to be doing something a little bit like that. So probably still quite cool and unsettled for western parts of Europe in week two. Let's go through to week three. This is the second to the ninth of November. Now, of course, of course the further out we're going, the weaker the seals are going to get and the more unreliable it's going to get, of course. So do please bear that in mind. Uh, the further out we go, the more unreliable it gets and weaker the signal gets. Uh, so this week, the week ending the 9th of November, 2nd to the 9th of November, has quite a bit of ridging across the western part of Europe. So a bit of a change there as we go right through the first week of uh, as we go through the first week of November. Looks like I have quite a bit of high pressure across the west of Europe with lower pressure up here. 
and the jet stream uh, is going north as well. So that could be a milder but drier week. And of course, it does depend on the exact position of the high pressure because in, in November, you know, high pressure is not necessarily guaranteed to be overly mild. In fact, it could be quite cold if you're drawing in a continental flow. So the exact position of the ridge makes a big difference. And whether it's a cloudy ridge or a clear ridge, if it's a cloudy ridge, uh, you know, anticyclonic gloom, then temperatures by day will probably be quite chilly, but by night they'll hold up. If it's a clear ridge, then temperatures could start to get quite cold at night, and you might get frost and fog and that sort of thing going. Uh, then we go through to week four. This is going to be week from the 9th to 16th of November. Uh, more changes here. Now, this does look mild of Western Europe, because it looks like we've got the ridge sitting across Germany and down into the Mediterranean. Very weak signals elsewhere, but I would surmise with that. It's got to be, it doesn't show any low pressure. There's got to be some low pressure uh, around. And I would surmise that's mostly in the Atlantic. And we're probably doing something a bit like that with a flow with a jet. So I would think that could be, again, very weak signals, just interpreting. That could be a milder but wetter week there uh, in the second week of November. We'll go even further out. So now... We're going to go uh, from the 16th to the 23rd of November. Again, very, very weak signals here for the mean silver pressure line. In fact, the signals are so weak, there's probably not enough to go on, uh, really. It looks like the ridge is moving over more towards the eastern side of Europe. So there's a little bit of higher pressure towards the eastern side of Europe, which can sometimes mean that Western Europe is wetter. But again, you know, I'll put a question mark in there because there's just not really... Uh, enough to, to go with there. And then finally, week six takes us from the 23rd of November to the 30th, last day of the month. And <laughs> look at that, nothing to work with at all there. Uh, so by week six, the market has completely lost its signal altogether. We just have a, a, a clear sort of blank canvas, uh, if you like. So nothing to work on at all from a mean sea level pressure perspective for uh for week six at last week of november very very mysterious so that was means of pressure this is 500 mil of our heights with this we're looking from the arctic view down or pole view down so uh this shows the wider view i suppose so this is week one again of course very strong signal for this week uh going to be taking us from the 19th to 26th of November, with high pressure again uh, blocking out to our north and to our northwest too. Lower pressure through here, so again, flow the jet could be doing something a bit like that. On the cool side of the jet, but we're unsettled with below average height slow pressure in the ascendancy. Now, this is week two. Uh, again, so for week two, uh, it still looks pretty unsettled from the 500 bit of our height perspective with low pressure from west of Europe. Higher pressure is up here and out there as well. The flow of the jet doing something a bit like that. So there is a dip in 500 bit of our flow. And so, yes, cool and unsettled again for week two, uh, which should take us to the 2nd of uh, November. Week three, 2nd to the 9th of November, looks like that. Remember, these are 500 bit of our height, so it's a slightly different way of uh, looking at the data compared to mean silver pressure. Looks like for the height anomaly, we've probably got some ridging coming in from the Atlantic to Northern Europe. Low pressure, lower pressure going to be up here. So that could be a drier week. And again, it just depend on the exact wind direction, whether that ridge produces a relatively mild week or whether it could actually be quite chilly. Uh, the week to the 16th of November is looking like that. So uh, a weak area of above average heights across Western Europe. Again, signals are weakening. That possibly suggests a relative, relative amount of dry weather there for the week from the 9th to 16th of November. 16th to the 23rd of November. Uh, looks a little bit more interesting, this one. So we've got some above average heights across Northern Europe and extending back towards the Arctic. Yeah, there's probably going to be some lower pressure through here. Maybe doing something a bit like that and flow with the jet. But with that high pressure burn to our north and northeast, it would be having a go anyway, uh, getting the winds into like an easterly direction. Then let's have a look at week six. It can take us from the 23rd to the 30th of November. And this is it. Again, very weak signals by the time we get through to the sixth week. Obviously, we've got higher pressure up towards Greenland or above average heights 
up towards Greenland and extending down towards Newfoundland and eastern parts of America. So that probably, if anything, that probably would, you know, weaken the zonal flow coming across the Atlantic, really. So, so maybe there could be a dip in the jet stream through here. So there's a trough over there, obviously. So if we're doing something a bit like that, with a flow with a jet, then it would make sense that we're possibly doing something a bit like that and uh, and having a colder week for that, um, you know, for that final week of November. But it's such a weak signal that, that it is very difficult to interpret. Right, so that's the mean cell pressure 500 mil of our height done. Let's see how all this works out for temperatures. So this is a week one temperature anomaly, and it takes us, again, uh, from the 19th to the 26th of uh, November, the week ending, October, I should say, week ending 26th of October. Cooler than average from the north and west of Europe. Not as cool as it has been previous October, but still generally below average, below average from the UK and Ireland, Scandinavia, below average too. Southern, southwestern Europe, above average, eastern Europe, uh, uh, above average too. The sex parts of Europe are near normal. Uh, week two, which is the 26th of October, 2nd of November, becoming milder across many parts of Europe in this week. Temperature anomalies lifting up across many parts of Europe in this week. Still hanging on to slightly cooler conditions in the extreme west of Europe, but generally the temperature anomalies going a little bit above average there uh, up to the 2nd of November. 2nd to the 9th of November, week 3, uh, looks like this. So above average temperatures for Scandinavia. Slightly cooler than average temperatures, hinted at anyway, it's a weak signal, but hinted at for Ireland, UK, possibly northwest parts of France, some southeastern parts of Europe, a little bit more than average too. Uh, week 4, temperature anomaly, uh, up to the 16th of November, again, looks like that, really weak signals, you'll notice. Possibly hints at being slightly milder than average for Scandinavia, slightly cooler than average perhaps for west, southwest of Europe, uh, above average in the southeast of Europe, near normal precipitation elsewhere. Week 4, 16th, 23rd of November looks like that. Again, very weak signals, a little bit above average Scandinavia, a little bit below average, close to the UK, to Ireland, to the Bay of Biscay, northwest parts of France, those sort of areas, southeast Europe also looks a little bit above average. And then finally, week 6, 23rd of November to the 30th, last day of November, a little bit above average in most parts of Europe by that point. So it looks like the end of November on a relatively mild note. So maybe my interpretation of that 500 bit of our height knowledge week six was a little bit awry. Uh, but anyway, it's six weeks away and it's a really, really weak signal. And then finally, we've got rainfall anomalies. This is how they're looking uh, for the next six weeks. If you're enjoying this video, please give us a like, by the way, on the video. And let us know in the comments what you think about all of this. Make sure you subscribe to Gaz Webber's YouTube channel uh, too. So, uh, week one, uh, rainfall anomaly taking us from 19th to 26th of November is wetter than average in the north and the west of Europe. Drier than average across southern and southeastern parts of Europe. And you can see that to our north, we're driving average like in Norway, you see near Norway, around Iceland. So you see where the high pressure is going to be, away to our north and west. And that's why it's still, although it's an unsettled low pressure dominated week, it is still quite uh, a cool week as well. Significantly wetter than average around Spain and Portugal, by the way. We may hear about flooding there, uh, I would have thought, with that sort of anomaly. Uh, week 2, 26th of October to 2nd of November. So, as early as this point, really, the signal is weakening, to be honest, for precipitation. Southern and southeastern Europe looks dry than average. Western Europe, France, Spain, Portugal, just into uh, England and Wales, anyway, looks a little bit above average for, for precipitation, maybe a bit drier towards Scandinavia. Week 3 is the 2nd to the 9th of November, and uh, generally things get being drier, I think, this week across the west of Europe. So it looks like after a very wet start, we do go to something drier and more high pressure dominated across northern and western parts of Europe. It is quite a weak signal, though. Week 4, 9th to the 16th of November, again, looks, if anything, a little bit on the drier than average side, but again, it is a very, very weak signal, but overall, possibly a little bit on the drier side for many northern and western parts of Europe. Week 5 is the uh, week to the 23rd of November, and look how weak the signals are by this point. And week 6 is even weaker 
uh, with the signal really. So uh, again, week six taking us up to the 30th of November, week ending the 30th of November is generally looking uh, very, very weak for, for the signal. No particular signal, though what we can see is that by week six, it is a little bit drier to the north. So it's going to be dry around Iceland, for example, and to the south of Greenland. Could that be indicative of some higher pressure up there? Maybe a little bit wetter through there. But it is such a weak signal that, that you can't really uh, interpret that very much, I don't think. Right, so that's your uh, six-week, 42-day ECMWF uh, look ahead. I hope you enjoyed it. As I say, this is all uh, this is all new stuff. It's new, a new video, new features at uh, Gazworth is. Uh, so uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, and uh, and yeah, it's absolutely uh, fantastic. Thank you so much to the ECMWF for making these uh, charts, you know, available, opening up their treasure trove to all of us. It's absolutely fantastic that they have done that after all of these years. Thank you so much to the ECMWF for doing that. Right, if you enjoyed this video, then please, can you give us a like? Make sure you subscribe to uh, the channel. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Worthies as well. Uh, and and uh, make sure you let us know in the comments uh, what you think. We are getting ever closer to 8K subscribers. We are quite close now to 7,500 subscribers. And uh, I did say... But when we hit 7,000, uh, no, quite close to 7,750 subscribers, I should say. I did say when we got 7,750, we will probably, I'd probably get that Amazon voucher. Because when we get to 8K, we're going to give away uh, a £30 Amazon voucher. So, got around another five, six uh, subs to put on, I think. And there will be at 7,750. Uh, at that point, I will get the Amazon voucher in. And uh, that will be the voucher we are giving away when we hit 8K subs. So, yeah, it's all wrong, of course. It's all happening. And uh, and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, tell your friends about Gazo Vince as well. It's absolutely great. Right, that's it for your videos uh, for today, Then I am having the evening off, so no live stream uh, this evening. But tomorrow, despite the fact that it's my birthday, we will still be working uh, tomorrow. So uh, gonna be got we're gonna have a weekend forecast, I think, tomorrow. Um, weekend look ahead. I think we'll do a 10 to 14 day, you know, a regular video uh, as well. I mean, in the live stream, I because it's going to be at 6 o'clock. Live stream, the birthday live stream will be at 6 o'clock. So, so that's primarily just to have a bit of fun and to let you all commiserate with me that I'm another year older on my birthday. But I'll probably show you some 12s then uh, in, in the birthday live stream. I might show you, you know, something from the CFS as well at Metro. So I'll see. Uh, I'll see. I'll see how the stream goes. But, but we'll definitely do the 12s then in the birthday live stream. So, so, so that's all coming up tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we've got a really big day for you on. So we've got the seventh winter 2020 21 update part one. It marks the halfway point of the winter updates. Can you believe it? We have reached halfway point of winter updates. And so because we've got halfway point, I thought we would premiere the seventh winter 2020 21 update. So the seventh winter 2020 21 update part one will be released as a premiere at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, uh, which means we've got a free morning. And so what we're going to do on Sunday morning is bring you the written Christmas update at the website. The third written update for Christmas will be released sort of in the morning. I'm not sure what time, probably around 10, 11 ish. Um, released in the morning at website, gazwebby.com. Uh, the third written uh, Chris update, and then we will do the, the winter update uh, part one, uh, seven winter update part one, as a premiere at 2 pm on Sunday afternoon, and that'll be followed by a live stream, of course, a regular Sunday live stream at six o'clock. So, loads of premieres, loads of live streaming coming up, and then part two of the seven winter update, which will be like an analog based uh, video, will be coming up as a premiere again on Monday evening at 7 pm. So, so a lot to remember, a lot to put in your diaries. It's, it's all going to be happening. One of the biggest weekends, I say, that we have ever done uh, to Gazworthy's. And this seventh update, by the way, is a solar special. So in part one, we'll be updated, as well as everything else. We'll still look at, like, Eurasia snow cover, what's going on in the oceans. But we will update all of the solar trackers and all of that sort of stuff. And then in part two, Monday going to be very very interesting that one because we will look at uh, the winter what winters are like through analogs of analysis we'll look at what winters can be like 
early in the new solar cycle. We've just started solar cycle number 25, so we will see, you know, whether these winters early in the new solar cycle are favouring uh, being cold. So a couple of very, very, very interesting videos from a solar perspective for the 7th winter 2000 and 2020 update. And they'll all be released as premieres on Sunday and Monday. But tomorrow is the birthday live stream after weekend forecast and a 10 to 14 day video update as well. So I shall see you tomorrow either with the videos or hopefully if you're around YouTube at 6 o'clock tomorrow evening for my birthday live stream. Uh, thanks so much uh, for tuning in to today's videos. That's all for now and thanks for watching.